Hey everybody, it's Gomladex, and welcome back to some more Magic Green. And today we're going to be playing another premiere draft of War of the Spark. Absolute classic set with a Planeswalker in every pack. Super cool lore to everything. The war between the Gatewatch and Nicol Bolas. That's why there's so many Planeswalkers here all fighting. Really awesome set. One of my favorites. One of the all-timers. And speaking of all-timers, Ugin is one of the coolest Planeswalkers ever printed and one of the strongest in draft this is a six mana four loyalty planeswalker we can play in literally any deck that has a minus three to destroy any permanent that's one or more colors and a plus one to spit out the top cards of your deck as two twos and when they die they go to your hand ugin is just an incredible card and an easy pack one pick one i would take over i think literally any other card in the set because no matter what colors we end up in we've got an incredible bomb rare now for pick number two, we have Trusted Pegasus as one of White's best commons, sending some stuff into the sky, getting some extra damage in. Alternatively, we have some okay black commons, Tithe Bear at the top of the curve, giving you some extra card advantage, and Sword and Thirst being decent removal early, just a little hard to cast. I think these are the three best cards in the pack. Mobilized District is okay. You do have to play a colorless land to play it, but then if you're ever flooding out, you can activate it as a 3-3, which is solid. I guess it's technically the most open out of all these cards, but I think I'm just going to take the best colored spell here and grab a Trusted Pegasus. For pack one, pick number three, now the best spell is Toll of the Invasion, incredible black card that is hand disruption to try to get your opponent's bomb rare out of their hand before they cast it, which is pretty important in a set like this. And while you're doing that, you still get to commit some power and toughness to the board thanks to the amass mechanic, so an excellent two-for-one, really phenomenal card, and I'm happy to take it here. If it weren't in the pack, the next best cards are probably like Spellgorge or Weird, or like um, maybe Guild Globe for staying flexible if we want to immediately push into a two-color pair. Dombri's Ambush is decent removal, though. Okay, pick number four. Not too much going on in this pack, honestly. Manticore is a fine top end card for red. Challenger Troll is a fine beefy threat in green. War Screecher is an okay two drop for white. I guess we just take War Screecher because none of these cards are powerful enough to really push us off color, but not super pumped about that as our pick four. Pick number five. Got a Pouncing Leaks for a nice aggressive white creature. 2 mana, 2 1 first strike to help break through your opponent's blockers. Keep getting damage in. Arlen's Wolf's another good, cheap, aggressive creature, but obviously it's in green, so it's off color here. I think this is a perfectly easy Pouncing Leaks. Pick 6, we find another Trusted Pegasus. White definitely looking like one of the most open colors here, because that's one of white's best commons. Alternatively, there's that Guild Globe again for splashing around, but not too much else in this pack. Just take the Pegasus. Pick 7, another Pouncing Lynx to curve into the Pegasus with. There is a Bond of Insight, though, which plays really, really well. Particularly in Blue-Black, where you have a lot of instants and sorceries that amass, like Toll of the Invasion. It's where this card gets really good. I don't think it's as good in Blue-White, because White's best cards are all creatures, really, so... I guess it would be a little awkward for us here. Let me actually just take the Lynx. Really the only flaw of the Lynx is the one toughness making it kind of hard to kill. Or kind of easy to kill, sorry. Pick 8, there's still an Invading Manticore in here, so maybe push towards red. Also still a Thunder Drake, good for any deck with a low enough curve that you might be able to double spell later. Good flyer too. I'll take the Thunder Drake here. I think these white cards are super good. Uh, nor are these. This pack as a whole is pretty weak. I feel like we've gotten to a pretty spiky draft pod here. All of the premium cards are disappearing pretty fast, and Grixis seems to be the most drafted color trio. So I think uh, we're playing against a bunch of players who have drafted the set a few times for sure. I'll just take this Bond of Discipline, but I don't think I'll be playing it. Uh, I don't think we'd be playing anything here. Or here. I guess totally lost is fine. Filler removal for the late game. Yeah, these packs have gotten real dry real quick. 
see how things go in pack number two. Well, we've got another trusted Pegasus we might get to wheel out of here. We can just go full-on blue-white flyers, go ahead and take an Aven Eternal here, because there's no chance that comes back around. Three mana for a 2-2 flyer and a 1-1 army is an excellent 2-for-1 play. Alternatively, we can try to be like green-white proliferate, but we have nothing to proliferate onto right now. I think pushing to blue-white flyers seems like a solid spot for this deck to be. Let's grab an Aven Eternal. I think we've gotten really cut out of the black, unfortunately. Pack 2, pick 2. As great as Narset is as card draw, she requires you to have a pretty high non-creature count to be consistent. You need to hit a non-creature non-land in your top 4. And blue-white, again, is going to be the most creature-heavy blue deck, because white is almost all creatures in this format. So I don't think Narset's actually going to play well for us, but Aven Eternal definitely will. And that doesn't mean that Narset's weaker than Aven Eternal, it just means Narset's weaker for this deck than Aven Eternal. Most decks, Narset would probably be a little better. Pick 3, there's a Gleaming Overseer if we want to try desperately to stick to black, despite how contested it is, which can be worth it because of how deep the color is, and Gleaming Overseer is an excellent card for an Amass deck, which we've started heading towards with two Aven Eternals. But I think I would rather get some nice card draw to stay fueled in our deck with Tamiyo's Epiphany. Pegasus is great too, uh, but we saw one in our opening pack, one here. We should be able to wheel like one of these, and like a three Pegasus deck is still perfectly good when most of our creatures already have flying anyway. So let's grab Epiphany. Pick number four, Spark Doubles, like a four mana a 3-3 three, three Aven Eternal, or a 4-mana 3-3 three, three Trusted Pegasus. And it's bad if we don't have any creatures on board, but we've got a high enough creature count, we should pretty consistently have them. I think that's better than Wanderer's Strike. 5-mana removal is just a little high. A little high of a mana cost. Pick 5, we've got another Thunder Drake, just really keep the flyers coming. There's a Narset here too, like blue is so open. But uh, again, we have three non-creatures in the deck. Need a way higher count to get there. I guess I've already got two four drops. We can speculate towards Narset and see if we can find enough to dig towards, because the upside would be pretty huge versus just a second Drake's not that insane. I still think it's really unlikely. We're going the Narset direction here. Here's a Law Rune Enforcer, great one drop. Start beating down with this or help this tap down your opponent's blockers to get extra damage in later. Pick 7 has basically nothing. I'm honestly just going to rare draft the Elder spell for gems. Pick 8, alright, Rally of Wings is like perfect for blue-white flyers. Untap your whole board, give it all plus 2 plus 2 till end of turn. That can win a game out of nowhere and it's really cheap. It's like a 2-mana version of um, whatever that 4-mana plus 2 plus 1 to everybody's called. I don't remember what the original one is called right now for some reason. Inspired Charge, that's what it is. Sky Theater Strix, get that flying curve going a little quicker now. It's a pick 10 Reaver though? Where'd all the other black cards go if people are going to pass Reaver pick 10? And I think Dovin's Veto is probably a little too narrow to run, but it's the only card we could. Definitely not going to run Time Twist or Cruel Celebrant or Silver Ring. Let's see what we get out of pack number three. Well, we start things pretty awkward with nothing great for this deck. I think single combat's a pretty bad board wipe because your opponent keeps their best card, and then you can't play creatures until the end of your next turn, so your opponent gets to cast stuff before you can afterward. I don't think we're going to have enough instants and sorceries to be a Bond of Insight deck, although I do think it's a great card in the right deck. I guess we're probably a Dovin deck, like getting in with our flyers and constantly shutting off their biggest ground creature so they don't like crack back at us that hard is probably a game plan. Not a super great one or a super premium one I really want to spend my pick one on, but it can absolutely fit into the deck, if nothing else. Okay, pick two is very easy. Elite Guard Mage is perfect. It's another flying threat that also gets us ahead in card advantage, gaining some life drawing a card. So we'll take that here. Pack three, pick three. We're pretty low on removal. 
And we've got an excellent removal spell here, which is Prison Realm. Exile whatever creature or planeswalker we need to and scry one. The only thing I don't like about Prison Realm is that it shows Nicol Bolas getting bound to the Prison Realm. That's dumb. I don't like that. All right, we are definitely a tap out kind of deck. We're playing a bunch of creatures at sorcery speed. We're not going to be holding mana up for something like No Escape, even though that is generally a pretty good card. I'd rather have an Epiphany or a War Screecher here. Keep our general deck idea together. Uh, now Divine Arrow is fine removal, since we're low on it. Pick six. I guess Pride Mate's not completely unplayable. We have one Elite Guard Mage, but that's only one card to work with the Pride Mate. So Enforcer Griffin is probably still slightly better, just as a big flyer. Pick seven. Contentious plan, we don't play. Eh, maybe topple the statue is not horrific here. It's definitely not great. Yeah, I feel like three mana is like a little too much. I don't think we're playing either though. Pack three, pick eight. Five two drops and a one drop already. I could play another Lynx, but I could also grab another Divine Arrow. Will I even have room for that? 15 creatures. Eh, not really. I think I have more room for another cheap creature than a uh, cheap lower removal spell here. And getting more creatures to jump into the sky with the Pegasus is pretty important. Because almost all of our other creatures are flying right now. Pick nine. Transmutation's pretty filler. Giant's pretty filler. I'll get the big booty giant. Maybe block off our opponent's ground troops and gain some life. But five life is a lot. Okay, nothing here. Probably nothing for the rest of the draft. Yeah, our deck is just fully built. It's all ready to go. We will call it a deck here. All right, here we have a look at our final deck list for today. It's a nice little blue-white Flyers deck. We are getting nice and aggressive with tons of things in the sky. War Screechers, Sky Theater Strix, Pegasus to jump our Lynxes and our Law Rune Enforcer and maybe our armies into the sky. Then we've got Aven Eternals, Thunder Drake, Elite Guard Mage, Enforcer Griffin, and a Spark Double to copy our best flyer. Or if we're insanely lucky, we've got our Bomb Rare of Ugin the Ineffable. Ineffable? Ugin the Ineffable. And we might be able to Spark Double an Ugin and just go wild, but uh, Ugin probably wins by himself without the Spark Double too, so... Really solid deck here. Tons of flying threats to get through. We've got some decent cheap removal like Prison Realm and Divine Arrow to use on our opponent's best uh, creatures they're trying to crack back with. Or we can stun them with Law Rune Enforcer, keep them tapped down as long as we can. Or Dovin can also stop them from damaging us. So some good ways to try to protect ourselves on the ground, especially with like a Bulwark Giant to really just block it all off in the late game. Just... uh a little bit of everything you want for a blue-white flyers kind of deck, and hopefully we can draw a nice, sweet, aggressive curve and send everything to the sky, but we'll see how it all ends up as we head into the gameplay. All right, here we are on the play for game one, definitely where we want to be. We've got Lynx into Pegasus here. Could also Strix into it, but we don't have a lot of non-creatures that we're playing on curve, especially in this hand, but in the deck in general. Strix is going to do less damage, it's just going to more consistently be in the sky. So here's Lynx. I guess if they don't play any great ground blockers, we can just Eternal first. But if they play that 1-3, that's going to be really annoying for Lynx. Oh, it's a 1-3 in the sky. Come on. Well, got a Rally of Wings that can do some big work here. Eternal first still, I think. Like, I guess Pegasus leads into Rally plus Strix in the same turn, but I would rather Rally after I've dumped all these creatures out, I think. Spellgorger weird on the ground. Ooh, hello, Ugin. Well, well, well. 
Still untrusted Pegasus. This scry when we cast on creatures? No, just the uh, the one three on the ground does that. Tenth District Legionnaire. Definitely trying to outrace us here. The Pouncing Lynx. Yeah, send on in. I don't love any of the trades. Oh, they don't send on in. Okay. And there's the land. So we're one mana off of the Ugin. Could be great. All right, well. Big damage here. Plus hold all of our blockers up. Rally of Wings is just awesome. Wish we opened up another in our draft pod. I don't think anybody else would have taken it. Because it's pretty narrow, but it is very good in our exact deck. If they don't block, I don't think I cast it. If they do, then I will. Like, I sure, I hit for 12 if they don't block, but... If they don't try to kill Pouncing Links here, I don't think I need to spend it. Okay, I will spend it. Woo! Rally. They're down to 12. I love that they read the card. They're like, what on earth? It's ridiculous. It is kind of ridiculous there. Now they have no flying blockers. We have four, five, six, seven damage in the sky every turn. Really looks like we're out racing right now, but they are red, so they could have a lot of cheap burn spells to clear our path. They could Pyro Helix our Lynx and our 1 1 Ugin's Conjurate. That's just a creature on the ground. That is not going to help them out here. I'm about to gain some life to really make sure I'm not dying. And I still have an Ugin. If something insane happens and we don't win quickly. Alright, well, incredible showing from Blue White Flyers for now. We start things off 1-0, heading into game two. Here we are for game two. Pretty unkeepable mana-wise, unfortunately. This is better, but it's still monocolored. Not a great start. I don't know why I thought Lynx was a one-mana card for a second there. Disregard that. Alright, so we have both of our colors, but we are still down a card from the mulligan. Fire Helix? Sure. So much better for me that they cast that now instead of waiting. They could have killed two creatures off the one card, and we would have been massively behind. We're just sprinting in for damage, alright. Shock my face for two, they say. They did scry to the top, so they found something good here. Hopefully it's just like a one-for-one one creature we can Prison Realm. Okay, well, not a creature, but we can still Prison Realm that. They exile a totally lost forever. I guess you could say they're totally lost got totally lost. Scry to the bottom. We've got plenty of mana. And no attacks. That Grim Initiate is very good against Pouncing Lynx. Relentless Advance. Get a 3 3. And poke me for one. There's a Thunder Drake. Um, the odds of Epiphanying into a 2 drop when we get to Scry for then draw 2 are high enough to want to play Thunder Drake first and try to get the counter on it next turn. 
And then we could have a 3-4 blocker for their 3-3, which would be a very big deal. Go down to 11. We've still got a little bit of breathing room, but not too much left. Divine Arrow. Okay, that's a good one. It's also a 2-drop to use with the Epiphany, but I don't want to use it right now. I want to find a different one. Okay, these are much better. So, draw Worse Creature to play right now, and next turn we play another Thunder Drake, then Rally, and buff both Drakes. That seems incredible as the, the plays for the next two turns. Seems genuinely incredible. I think that's good enough at 11 here to take another 3. Because next turn we're going to rally and we'll have all of our creatures untapped. We can go to 8 this turn. Ooh. Well, go to 7 this turn. I'm really happy I attacked, though. Because our 3-4 wasn't going to hold off a 4-4 four four regardless. Is it worth the instant rally here? Or do we save Divine Arrow to just kill their 4-4? Four, four? I feel like it's worth the uh, the instant rally to trigger both drakes. They're down to 8 now. They are dead in the sky next turn if they don't have removal. No shot, really? Well, we literally had nothing against that. Of all the cards... Ugh. Well, I think we played that out as best as we could. Our deck tried its bestest. We got really close still, literally a turn off from killing them. But the stealth mission on the 5-6 for just 7 unblockable damage... What a disappointing ending. It is 1-1 one and one heading into game 3. We just got slapped by a giant fish right across the face. Well, some more terrible mana for game 3. It's very close to a forced mulligan, but we have a lynx and we're on the draw this time. And all of our blue spells aren't castable until we have 4 lands total anyway, so... They are later game plays. We don't need a blue source turn 2. I think... I think I keep this on the draw with how powerful the other spells are, but I don't like it. There's definite variance to this hand. We've hit the plane, so now one island and everything is castable. Playing against blue-black, one of the strongest color pairs in the format. Any combination of blue-black and red. Um, if you're getting to play more than one of those colors, you're in a really good position. Basically, if you're not playing at least blue, black, or red, one of those three colors, then you're having a real bad time. Which I mean, guess, or which I guess means uh, specifically if you're Selesnya, you're just not having a good time. But if you get to play blue and black, or black and red, or blue and red, those are the strongest decks. Because those are the three strongest colors with all the amassed nonsense. Well, we're doing really bad on our draws. We hit two more white sources with four blue cards in hand. I honestly don't care at all what they toll here. Ooh, alright, well we found the blue source. Right on time. I think we're playing to the board, getting aggressive here. Guard Mage was the best, uh, the best toll target. That would have been the best play for us this turn. Get in there, Menace card. Oof. 
Strix. We need six mana to double spell. So they can't, um, they can removal spell in response to spark double, um, but they have to do it before I choose what I'm copying, so they can't, like, removal spell Thunder Drake to stop me from spark doubling it. Um, and also kill spark double, then my spark double is just a lynx. I still think it's better to just epiphany now and then try to play double and strix in the same turn. We want to get an island and a good spell off of the epiphany. All right. Trade Conjure into Lynx, this seems fine. All right, Island and good card. Let's go. That's uh, that is a good card. Island, good card. I think I do keep the war screecher. Then I could play Strix plus Screecher to trigger, and I can try to spark double an Ugin. <laughs> really tempting. Cruelty the Thunder Drake. Yeah, so they were just trying to stop Spark Double from becoming a a Drake. Well, sad day for Drake. It's gone. All right, they're tapped out of a counterspell for Ugin. But then they could have the uh, the counterspell for the uh, spark double. My presence alone guide. Got a rally of wings when this 2-2 two -two dies. Hope they don't have like a spark harvest here. It'd be pretty sad. Something that just says destroy target planeswalker. They don't. They're gonna have to throw two spells at Ugin to kill him. Well, they get him to not be able to minus here, but still looking good. Especially because spark double when they don't have the counter. Woo! Let's go! I can't believe it actually happened. I'm genuinely... <laughs> genuinely surprised we actually got to do that in one of these games. That is so unlikely to hit those two together and have Ugin not be dead. Yeah. That's a fair time to concede. Ooh, we got the double Ugin. That is... absolutely... insane. And we are now two and one, heading into game four. Here we are for game four. Well, it's kind of weird, but I really don't think we're mulliganing anything with Ugin in it. Well, that makes the hand much better. Hoping to hit creatures on curve, but we've got to draw step every single turn, so this could become incredible. Like, if I, I just hit Aven Eternal into the four mana two three flyer for our next two draws. We are set for life. Okay, Rally of Wings is a very awkward draw. If I dove in pre-combat, they just respond with their instant anyway. All right, cool. Well, this way they didn't get to hit dove in for one. Hello. I'm going to tax your spells, blue-red deck. How do you feel about that? Oh, it doesn't doesn't tax Kazmina. And she gets A2-2 just for hitting the board. So even if I Prison Realm her, she's already gotten value. The Callus Dismissal Prison Realm, that's going to be a nightmare for me. Do I just let her make another 2-2? Two -two? I don't think so. This is really annoying, though. Um, 
I need a sixth land for Ugin pretty badly, but I also need more threats still. Just a 1-3 in hand outside of Ugin. What does Kazmina do as her static? Spells we cast the target creature plans worker costs two more. Okay, thank god that was an ability, not a spell. So we're minusing Dovin to stop the damage from the 2-2 two -two because then it's basically just a minus one instead of a minus two. Which is the alternative. Thunder Drake. I minus again here or just hope that it sticks around? I'll just hope it sticks around. Like, Dovin's not really doing much else than fogging anyway, so if they send a bunch of damage Dovin's way, that's fine. That's all Dovin's doing by minusing, is just fogging. Nobody's perfect. Even Goblin Assailant. Good old 2-mana two 2-2, two, two, no text. Woo! Here's Enforcer Griffin. Please stop drawing burn. They did not stop drawing burn. There's a heart fire. There's too much action. I guess the honor of the God Pharaoh is why. These results are an anomaly, not to be repeated. Please stop drawing burn. I'm begging. Let me keep one. No. Okay. I got to keep it. Okay, now they're like fully untapped against this Ugin. So it feels a little bold to play it, but I can't double spell for Thunder Drake either. I guess if I get them to try to burn spell the Thunder Drake on attacks here, then I can. Or if they try to kill it in the end step. Okay. Can always rally on blocks if need be, but also I'm only taking two damage, so I'm already winning the race. Okay. Divine arrow. They've only got two mana up, that can't kill Ugin. So let's just get Ugin down. Well, it could kill Ugin, it can't counter Ugin, is what I should say. I feel like they have Pyro Helix in hand with how things have been running out. Um, but they've been wanting to find a better line for Pyro Helix. I don't want to minus and get Ugin immediately killed to one damage. Maybe it's Heartfire. I think if it was Heartfire, they could have responded to the thing. Well, they have Time Twist is what it is. A weird one. One's back with a plus one plus one counter. Yeah. Okay. Um, five toughness there, two there. They've got the Pyro Helix that is pretty good here, since I'm tapped out of Rally. We'll see. Be the full board wipe. Nope, Dreadhorde Twins. Okay, Ugin's looking great. Ugin's looking like he's got things pretty locked up for us. Rally and Divine Arrow next turn and get the counter. Ooh, Jaya. 
That makes the twins a 3-2, the assailant a 4-3. And Jaya can minus kill one of our creatures here. Woo! Not against Rally Wings. Okay. This is four damage there. This is three damage. This is also three damage. I don't even have to cast Divine Arrow, but if I do, I buff Thunder Drake. I don't think I do. Ugin is like sick nasty. And then Ugin could just kill Jaya as well. Um, you know, I can just attack Jaya. Yeah, there's the concession from our opponent. Ugin is just wild, especially with the dream team of all the flyers alongside. Really excellent work from our bomb rare. We are now three and one, at least a 50-50 run out of the deck as we head into game number five. Here we are for game five on the play. Links into Eternal. Let's get things rolling here. Playing against a blue deck. There's Law Rune Enforcer. Fashionably late, but I can play that in the same turn. I play a Wars Creature. Get some good mana efficiency going. I guess I need another white source for that, though, which could be bad. 1 3. Well, trusted Pegasus it is. Lynx has been a massive underperformer. I would rather just have a 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two. Because there are good, like, 2-mana 1-3s. No! They're in the best color pair in the format, in blue-black, and they have played incredible commons to start things off here. Well. Oh. Pegasus into Eternal here. Get some damage in. Oof. Thunder Drake is large. Ah, uh, there's Rally. That'd have been really good last turn. It's still okay here. Uh, we want more flyers, and we want more white sources over anything. We've got a lot of spells, but we only play one per turn. Our opponent is not having anywhere near the same issues. They might be having the opposite issues. No! Island over planes. That is quite bad. I don't really want to rally into five open mana from our opponent. Get the law rune down since I can't use the majority of my mana each turn. Wow. Fair enough. Give the double spell for the Drake here. They do not. There's our own Drake, but they probably just have another no escape up. Two cards in hand. We can't really play around it. They're never going to counter a Pouncing Links. Okay. It's not the counter spell. It could be like Obnixus's Cruelty or something. Or they just want to use Visionary. Come on, top deck planes. We play Lynx and Rally next turn for our double spell. No, that's so cruel. Yikes. Exile two creatures. I feel like we're just getting manhandled by the best deck in format. I just play a Pegasus and they just exile that.
The alternative is to just play a Lynx and let them exile Eternal. I think we get the mana efficiency so I can double spell with Lynx if we get another planes. Well, there we go. I mean, Rally's pretty bad here, though. With one flyer now. Does still kill a Thunder Drake as a combat trick, and then they don't have any flyers left. Something. But if they, like, respond with instant speed removal, this is going to be terrible. We'll see. I guess Spark Reaper's so good. Now they can just Spark Reaper away the Thunder Drake. And then they get the Spark Reaper away Kaya. Like, they're casting so many cards that are two-for-ones, and they're turning them into three-for-ones off things like Spark Reaper now. Okay, these are not that impactful. At this point, we need something crazy like Ugin. Or more Aven Eternal style cards that are pretty good. Spark Double works as another Aven Eternal. Spark Reaper running all the way to Value Town here. Tithe Bear with the edge of the battlefield. Draw a card for another two for one. They still don't have flyers. Our deck's got a chunk of those. Hey, even a turtle became a 1-1 one -one for a second. I was worried. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you so small? Yeah, these pouncing lynxes have looked horrible all game long. They just immediately got blanked by a 1-3. Uh, Eternal Skylord. Fantastic uncommon. 3-3 three, three and a 2-2 two, two flyer and any more amassing just makes their flyer even bigger. Are they going to spark harvest it away, though? Interesting. But I, mean, I guess their next amass is going to have flying anyway. There's the roadblock for the Tithe Bearer Giant. Who would win? Tithe Bearer Giant or Bulwark Giant? Neither. They'll bounce off each other forever. Double Spark Harvest Kaya Omnix Cruelty. When the strongest color pair is the most open color pair. R.I.P. Oof. We are slowly dying to Tithe Bearer. I mean, I could lose three creatures to kill it, but then the rest of their board chips in. And they hit even a little bit harder. Yeah. All right. Aid the Fallen, the Kaya. That's two more removal spells. We have no flyer left, and we're super dead. Even an Ugin is nowhere near saving us there. We're heading into game number six. All right, here we are for game six. Strix into Pegasus, late game Bulwark Giant.
Playing against a blue-red, which should have a million removal spells. Cheap burn. We're playing against a lot of the same stuff today. I don't remember... I think we played against blue-black twice. We played against blue-black twice and blue-red like two or three times now. And that's kind of the format, though. Grix is by far the best three colors. It is kind of boring, though. Kind of samey. I'm actually surprised. We've drafted a larger variety of decks than I've expected we would be able to. I expected to end up just on blue-black like every time with how open it is on average. But I tried to take some other strategies somewhat highly so that we could look at a little bit of everything here, and I think it has panned out. Uh-oh. If they double spell with two Thunder Drakes on board, it's going to be disastrous. Absolutely disastrous. Also, they are really good blockers here because they can just double block one of our Thunder Drakes, so we can't even attack now. Which is unfortunate. Do I hold off to try to double spell with these to get a counter on both my drakes? When I have six mana? This might be wrong, but I kind of think I do. Uh oh. Well, that is obviously another two mana spell. Two mana instant burn here. Yeah, that's horrific. We have one, three, four of our own now. With a Bulwark Giant coming up, I think I'm racing. They're down to 12, we're at 14, we're gonna gain five. I mean, they can just stop the race by holding up the Thunder Drakes as blockers, then we're not really doing anything, but as long as they're attacking at us, we'll attack at them. Alright, they just held off for blocks here. So, we're completely walled off, we just play a Bulwark and pass. And now we're in Ugin waiting room. I mean, Rally would basically immediately kill them too. So we have two cards that insta-win, Ugin and Rally. Law Rune Enforcer is pretty good here. It's not one of the, like, oops, I won cards like Ugin and Rally, but they don't have the burn for it immediately. It can find some chip damage, which is pretty big when they're down to 12. Uh-oh, Narset is terra-bad for us. That's gonna find the the burn. Oh my god, it finds a Jaya when they've already got a nice turtled-up board, and we find lands. Just no attacks here, even with Law Rune Enforcer, so now they just Jaya away the Law Rune Enforcer. Sarkin's Catharsis? That's cute. That doesn't really affect anything right now. That will make them kill us like a turn faster, though. Whenever they plan to head that route. They're gonna kill the Pegasus, sure. Cameo's Epiphany. Alright, one of our best draws. Neither of those are very good here, but Griffin's not terrible. It's still not nearly good enough. I think I ditch all of it. Oh, they've got Narset on board. Oh my god. 
So Epiphany's actually the literal worst draw on her deck. I lied. I mean, I guess I could have enforced her down this. Sent in Turd Ogre and a 2-2 to kill Narset. They get a free kill on Avon Eternal. I'm going home. Well, that is three and three out of this deck. A little disappointing of a run. I think this deck was pretty good. Probably one of the best kind of blue-white builds you can do with a bunch of flyers. Grab the Rally of Wings pretty highly. Would have loved to see another copy of Rally to really make this deck better, but I think this is one of the stronger decks we could have ended up in the draft pod and one of the stronger builds of blue-white. Could have used less Pouncing Lynxes and more high-toughness creatures. I think this was the biggest underperformer. And the biggest overperformer, um, what, what is the biggest overperformer? I think everything in the deck I thought was going to do well, but the biggest overperformer, I guess, goes to Spark Double, because I didn't expect to actually get to Spark Double up in Ugin, uh, but it was super sweet. We did get to do that that one time, and it was absolutely explosive. So again, I mean, I've said this every time I haven't just been playing a Grixis deck. I feel like the best you can really hope for outside of Grixis builds is an average deck of 3-3 and 4-3 when you have like a really well-built non-Grixis deck and this feels like a pretty well-built non-Grixis deck to me so 3-3 three, three or 4-3 is where it ends up. It's just a set where there's way too many incredible two-for-one value plays clumped together in those three colors, blue, black, red. And we do have some of them, thanks to being in blue, the Avon Eternal, the Tamiyo's Epiphany, really just the Avon Eternals for super premium stuff, but don't have enough to compete with some of those other decks where we found our losses. The blue-black dream deck, the blue-red dream deck, and uh, it's been long enough I forgot our first loss as well. So just get destroyed by Grixis as you do in the format. Still, solid 50-50 run. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more on your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel where I'm live every Wednesday. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.